The Bank of Canada is back on pause, but are there enough signs of the economy cooling to keep it from hiking rates again? Joining us now to discuss, Leslie Preston, Senior Economist at TD. Leslie, great to have you back on the program. My pleasure. It's a great day to have you on because I sort of want to take the temperature. A lot happened last week in terms of not only hearing from the Bank of Canada, getting the pause, but then we had labor market information come out just two days later. Uh, more jobs than expected. How, how do we run this all through the calculus to try to figure out where we're headed? Well, I think I'll start with the last thing you mentioned there on the job market. More jobs than were expected, but I think when you dig a little deeper under the hood, you see a lot of those jobs were self-employment, which you know can be great for an individual uh, to be self-employed, but we generally don't see think of that as a sign of economic strength. When we look at private sector jobs, that trend continues to slow. So we would characterize the job market as job growth is slowing and the fact that the unemployment rate remained at 5.5 percent which is an uptick from the um, pandemic rebound low as you know consistent with a labor market that's cooling gradually a lot's been said too about uh, while we do get if you get a month of labor market mm -hmm. gains which we did so there's very good reasons to sort of dig beneath that headline number also immigration right the, the rate at which the uh, the population is growing compared to what we're growing the labor force then we start to get a little more color on that number yeah exactly and i think uh market watchers and forecasters need to adjust their expectations of thinking you know a typical month 15 to twenty thousand jobs you know that number's higher now that said i think uh, economists and forecasters who forecast this number a month ahead were looking for a bigger slowdown than they saw. So, you know, 40,000 new jobs was sort of just keeping pace with growth in the population, but forecasters had expected it to be more like 15, 20. So that was the upside surprise there. But still on net, I think when we look at the characteristic of the job gains underneath and that, you know, Canada's labor market data is always volatile and the unemployment rate has ticked up in recent months. So I think the fact, to my mind, that it didn't give back shows that this cooling we've seen in recent months in the labor market is a bit more persistent. So that was Friday. I feel like we're going to roll yeah, back in time because on third, we got the, the rate decision on Wednesday, but we didn't hear from the bank really, apart from the statement, until Thursday in that speech in Calgary that the mm -hmm. governor, Tiff Macklin, gave. Any more color on that as to what they're thinking? I felt like it was one of those days where wherever you wanted the headline to say, you could find something in that speech. Yeah, that's certainly the case. I mean, the Bank of Canada is at a, a tricky point in terms of setting monetary policy. They know they've raised interest rates a lot. They know that the impact of all that uh, monetary tightening is still working through the system. Um, you know, at the same time, they don't want markets to get ahead of themselves and start pricing in cuts too aggressively because inflation still needs to come down. They want to keep market interest rates elevated to help enable that to slow. But overall, I think uh, it's interesting you use the word pause in your first questions. And I think uh, Governor Macklin was very careful not to use the word pause in any of his remarks. Yeah, he just didn't go, but don't yeah. call it a pause. <laughs> don't call it, you know, we had that situation yeah. earlier in the year when they were on pause and, you know, the housing reignited uh, momentum in the housing market, which the bank does not want to see. Things started to pick up. But I think they are in wait and see mode, definitely. The next couple of data releases, particularly on inflation, very important to confirm that we're continuing to see that gradual slowdown in inflation. Well, I mean, frankly, the bank would prefer perhaps more rapid slowdown in inflation, but we're expecting inflation to continue to come down as economic growth slows. So we think that, or TD Economics' view is that the Bank of Canada is at the height of the rate hiking cycle, but you know they're going to maintain this hawkish stance and rhetoric till they're more convinced on inflation. You know we have a forecast for growth to slow quite a bit in the second half of the year and into next year, and we think that will be enough to turn the temperature down on inflation and enable the Bank of Canada to stay on hold for a prolonged period of time. We're going to get another inflation print in the coming days out of Canada. What the thing I found interesting about the statement that came with the rate decision last week is that they said, don't expect it to be, and I don't think they ever told us it would be a straight glide path from up high to down low. You get a bit of a bump. We got back above 3% in the summer. A bit of a warning on gasoline prices. Could it be a bit of a bumpy ride here? Definitely. And the bank was wise to warn about that because we are expecting headline inflation in August to tick up to 3.7%. You mentioned, you know, being back above three. So set to get a little further 
above 3%, and that's exactly, as you mentioned, on those higher gasoline prices we've been seeing at the pump reflecting higher oil prices in international markets. So that's headline inflation. Uh, the bank focuses when they're setting monetary policy on their core measures of underlying inflation because oils, oil and gasoline are one of those prices that, you know, they swing up, they swing down and could provide a misleading signal on where inflation is headed. So we do expect that the core inflation measures will continue to decelerate slightly, but on a year on year basis to remain above 3%. So sort of what we have been seeing, which is core inflation is coming down, but it's very slow. Um, sort of the easy gains in weaker inflation are really in the rear view mirror. And it's those services prices um, that have been quite hot that we need to see those gains cool. And it's, it's only happening very, very slowly. So that's, that's our view. You know, if we see a different, a much different outcome, I mean, as I say, the Bank of Canada is kind of at a critical uh, juncture. You know, if, a, if the report comes in a lot hotter than we're expecting, then we would likely be starting to consider whether we would see the bank hike again. So we're very much, us and the Bank of Canada, very much in data dependent mode right now. All right, my next question for you is going to feel like jumping the gun if we're talking about hotter than expected economic data, which of course the bank has warned us they could go again if they have to. Uh, but the question we get a lot is, when are they going to start cutting, right? And it's one thing to be perhaps on a pause that doesn't see any more hikes, but when do we get the cuts? Well, I think those are a long way away. And I think the governor was right to sort of say, you know, it's way too early to be talking about that. You know, given the last question you and I were just discussing, you know, the potential that they could hike again. We don't think the bank will be ready to cut rates until the middle of next year. Once we really see a more uh, convincing slowing in inflation and inflation kind of on a three month annualized basis getting much closer or that they can see that inflation is headed closer to their 2% target. We're going to get the Fed later this month, too, and their interest rate decision. Obviously, it's a huge market mover globally. Are they sort of the same camp the, as the Bank of Canada, or do they have sort of a different uh, path ahead? Well, from the perspective of our forecast, actually, it's a very similar path. We also expect that, you know, in line with our economic forecast for the U.S. economy to slow, not so much in the third quarter, but come the fourth quarter of this year for economic growth to slow, that, that the Fed is on hold. But again... In, in data dependent mode. We have seen some more uh, encouraging slowing in the inflation metrics on the US side. Now US inflation got to a higher point than Canada. So they've kind of had further to come down. But uh, there too, we've seen labor market gains slow in the United States. So we do think that there is a path to weaker inflation, but the Fed is certainly on, on high alert for um, renewed inflation pressures or if you know they don't see um, the cooling they're expecting in the labor market.